Hello everyone, this is Jan Chromi and together we will continue the course Interdisciplinary Approaches to Language and its Use. In this presentation we will conclude our discussion of the psycholinguistics of bilingualism. We will focus on the idea of a cognitive advantage for bilingual speakers. Approximately until the 1960s, bilingualism was considered negatively. Researchers at that time claimed that bilinguals have low scores in verbal IQ tests and that, that they are generally less intelligent than monolinguals. Also, it was claimed that bilingual children are confused because of the presence of the two languages. All these claims have been later proven wrong. Since the 1960s, bilingualism has been perceived positively. There is an obvious practical advantage in learning more than one language. Also, it has been hypothesized that the use of more than one language enhances our mental flexibility. For example, the mutual interference between the two languages could force the bilinguals to use strategies that accelerate cognitive development. The idea behind cognitive benefits of bilingualism is related to attention. According to this view, bilinguals need to control their attention more than monolinguals. They are constantly trained to attend to one or the other language. Thus, they should have an enhanced ability to regulate and control their attention. The question is whether it influences their performance in non-linguistic tasks which require attention control. Ellen Bialystok and Dana Shapiro in their 2005 study examined the ability to identify the meanings of the ambiguous pictures such as this one here. We can view this picture as a duck or as a rabbit. To be able to do this, we need to use our executive control. This means that we suppress the initial meaning of the picture and attend to the other one. Crucially, children are typically not able to do this until about six years of age. Bialystok and Shapiro tested six-year-old bilingual and monolingual children and found that bilingual children are able to distinguish the two meanings earlier than monolinguals. According to their view, bilingualism offers the children a developmental cognitive advantage. The cognitive advantage in bilinguals has not been examined only in children. There are studies concerned with adults and also with elderly people. In this study, Ellen Bialystok, Fergus Craig and Maurice Friedman asked whether bilingualism helps in maintaining cognitive functioning and delays the onset of symptoms of dementia in old age. They analyzed a sample of 184 patients with dementia. 51% of the sample were bilinguals. According to the patient records, bilingual patients showed symptoms of dementia on the average four years later than monolinguals. In other words, it seems that the knowledge of more than one language may indeed delay the onset of dementia in the old age. However, the idea of the bilingual cognitive advantage has been largely disputed in the recent years. Many studies can be found which fail to show any effects of bilingual advantage. Lately, meta-analyses have been published which show that there is no bilingual advantage at all. And also, it seems that there has been a publication bias in the field of bilingualism research. In a remarkable study, Angela de Bruin, Barbara Tricani and Sergio de la Sala analyzed conference abstracts from the year 1999 to 2012 and asked which of these studies were subsequ subsequently published in the scientific journals. What they found was that the probability that the study was published was heavily influenced by the finding it presented. From this table, it seems clear that studies supporting the bilingual advantage had a higher probability to get published than studies which either found mixed results or even found evidence against the bilingual advantage. This is very important because it seems that there was a significant difference in publishing findings for the bilingual advantage hypothesis than against it. Recently, a meta-analysis of the research on bilingual advantage in adults was published by Mina Lechtonen and her colleagues. The authors examined 152 published and unpublished studies on the topic, which employed various tests of executive functions. 
The authors analyzed the results of these studies together and aimed to determine the overall effects. Importantly, no evidence for bilingual advantage was found. The only reliable effect was a contrary effect. The bilinguals had a tendency to score worse than monolinguals in the verbal fluency tests, which is a sign of a bilingual disadvantage which we discussed in the previous presentation. Before we will conclude this presentation, I have one reading tip for you. If you are interested in the idea that bilinguals do have enhanced cognitive abilities, you should read a recent critical review paper, The Advantages of Bilingualism Debate, by Mark Antonio. If you enjoyed the presentations, we would be glad if you would like them on YouTube. That is all from me now, and also, this is the end of the psycholinguistic part of the course. I hope you liked it, and I hope at least some of you will go further and become experts in the whole field. Goodbye.